Hi, it's Kristen. Today I'm going to show you how to do a quick pencil sketch in Photoshop Elements using filters. A lot of times when I'm making a scrapbooking page, I like to give it my pages a little bit of an artsy look to it using some filters and also some watercolor brushes, and so that's what we're going to be doing today. This is going to be our final project. As you can see, I have some elements um, of dandelions. Uh, these elements are from Kim Jensen Designs over at the lily pad. See, I've used uh, this dandelion, the little sprays of the dandelion, the wind, um, and some of the little bits of stems. Uh, the other thing I'm using is this cute little bunny photo that I found on a free stock photo site called pixels.com. It's a little bunny sniffing a dandelion. And the reason I chose this picture was that I thought um, the fur would really look great with a pencil sketch. And plus the fact that I really love bunnies. We have a lot of wild bunnies, these little brown wild bunnies running in our yard, uh, especially a lot during the spring. And, and I really like watching them play outside. And so seeing this picture, that's what I thought of and um, he looks like he wants to make a wish and so that's where my inspiration for my page came from. So I've also used some of these uh, really great watercolor high resolution uh, watercolor brushes by McBad Shoes and I will have the link for you below um, in, the, in the comment section so that you can get uh, this great uh, free watercolor brush set yourself to use. So this is going to be the brush here that I'm, I'm mainly going to be using. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm first going to get started with a free, uh, with a new blank workspace. And I want to make my own background. And for that, I'm going to be using the, um, the foreground and the background colors. I'm going to click on my my color swatches here and to set the foreground color if I click on that it's going to bring me up the color picker and I'm just setting the code that I want to use uh, for the color it's E4E0D7 and that gives me an off-white or ecru kind of um, light beige color so I'm going to click OK and then the background I'm using uh, to make a beige color it's the hex code is B0A69A and that will set my background. The next step I'm going to do is also use the filter tool and that is to render clouds and that will make um, make the two background and foreground combine in a cloud formation um, to blend the two together. So I'm going to go to filter, render, and clouds and that just blends the two together. Now, I want to get this a little bit smoother. I, the light comes through and it kind of looks like those cloudy days and it's a little bit furry for me. So I want to smooth this out a little bit and I'm going to do that with the Gaussian blur. So again, we're going to use the filter tool, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And again, this is all set to taste. So just dial the radius as you want to smooth it out. And um, I'm going to use the 31.8% as, as good. Okay, now in addition, I'm going to add some texture to this. And I had gotten a question in regards to texturizing using your own photos uh, for texture. And the way you can do that is by taking a picture of anything um, whether it be your you know cement sidewalk or um, a, the bark of a tree in my instance I've used this wonderful um, picture of a rock wall that when my husband and I were out to dinner I had taken a picture of the wall in the restaurant because I really liked the way the the rocks were so in order to use this for the texturizer what you need to do is change your JPEG and resave it as a PSD file. And so I'm just going to do file, save as, and then save this as a PSD file. 
and I'm just going to click yes because I've already done that so I'm just going to override what I already have there so I just click yes and so what that does now it takes the rock uh, photo that we had and it will save that as a PSD file so now I'm going to go back to my workspace and so with my paper here I want to go to filter and then filter gallery and inside the filter gallery uh, you have all of these different filters that you can use and what we're going to be using today is texture and with the texture we want to use texturizer so the um, it will keep generally the last filter you used and that was uh, canvas and if you click on this little menu next to the canvas it's um, I call it a drop-down menu but some people call it a hamburger um, I'll go ahead and click on that and it says load texture when you click on load texture what you're going to look for is that PSD file that you just saved and I know that it's this one this IMG 536 that was my rock wall and I'm gonna go ahead and open that and what that did was it just brought that texture of the rock wall into my paper now your scaling is the size of your your picture so set it goes anywhere from 50 percent and up the smaller the setting more of that rock formation you're going to get the higher the scaling it just makes the image larger so you're losing a lot of the additional rock formations as you make that size or percentage higher so I'm going to just dial it back down to 50 percent what the relief does is that is the impression that you get or the distance or, or the embossing and so the lower it is you have no dimension at all on that texture the higher it is as I take the slider up and here we are where we were before about five and that's really nice as you get higher as you can see as I scroll through it brings more of that texture into your page now you can do this with like I said with photos or you can um, save a background a pattern background paper that you may have gotten from a designer um, and save that as a PSD to use that texture however you can whichever you prefer to do you can also change the the light formation whether the light is coming from the top or from the bottom from the left and that is going to change also your texture so just um, just experiment with how you want how you want that also the inversion does that as well so again just experiment with these and you can have the ability in uh, the filter gallery to add multiple um, textures you can layer them together so here we have the rock wall if I wanted to add another one I would just go down here to the bottom and click on new effect layer similar to in Photoshop elements you want to add a layer you would do the same thing so you just click on that it actually duplicates the current texture that you had so now you can go up to the top in the top texture you can change that if you wanted to add the the canvas along with that rock wall then you have layered textures you can even use um, instead of the rock wall if you wanted to um, change add bubble wrap or watercolor or and you know of course adjust the sliders um, and add multiple textures onto your image you can do so um, there's multiple ways to do it and if you just want the texture that you started out with all you need to do is just use this highlight the the filter that you don't want to use and just click on the garbage can and that will get rid of it I'm gonna keep um, my canvas here with the 50 uh, scaling and the five relief with the light reflected from the top down as my texture that I want to use and I'm going to click OK so with that it brings in my texturized paper and now I'm ready to go with the with the sketch 
Okay, so now we need to bring in our photo of the bunny. I'm just going to drag that up into my layout. And there's a few things that we need to do to get this ready in order to do sketching. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify my layer. So I just right click in the, in the um, layer and simplify it. Now I need to duplicate this picture. I'm going to right click and duplicate layer. Hit OK. And so that made a duplicate of my colored photo. I'm going to shut off by clicking on the visibility uh, icon next to the original photo and just shut that off so I can um, continue on and then I can use that layer later if I needed the color photo again. So this layer of the color photo I need to change to black and white and you can do this various ways. You can unsaturate it by doing a shortcut of control shift and U in a PC or command shift and U on a Mac or what I like to do is use the black and white adjustment layer so that this way I can increase or decrease the um, the colors. And now I need to make this layer this duplicated layer I need to make this black and white so how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go to enhance and I'm going to convert to black and white and that allows me to change my colored photo over to a black and white and you can change the intensity of the levels of the shades in the photo I'm going to take green make this a little bit brighter and the red, so I'm going to adjust that a little bit as well. So I get a really nice black and white. So some of these areas pop, especially here in the fur area, so that I can uh, bring that out in my sketch. So I'm going to click OK. Now once that is done, I need to duplicate this layer, my black and white layer. So again, um, you can right click and click duplicate or you can do a shortcut of control or command J to duplicate your layer. So now that you have your two black and white layers what you need to do now is the top black and white layer is we need to invert this to make a negative and the way you can do that really simply with a with a um, shortcut key is command or control I and that inverts it to a negative. On that negative layer we need to change the blend mode from normal to col color dodge and what that does is pretty much um, gets rid of most of the uh, the negative with just a few white areas. From here we're going to go back to our filter menu and go to filter other and minimum and when you do that, now this is where the uh, pencil sketching is coming into play. Now you want to set the radius. I use one, but anything above two comes out a little bit darker. I still like the one. It's a little bit more delicate. Anything over two, now you're getting um, too much. It, it's, it's taking away, as you can see, you can use the slider for this too. You can see that it's taking away from the this the sketching so we want to go back and like I said I use a one because that gives me those really nice sketch lines but anything one or two is is best it's it's um, again it's your choice which you prefer but I'm going to do one and a click OK so now we have the basis for our sketching and we're going to end up on both of these black and white layers we're going to add a reverse mask because we want to actually paint in using the watercolor brushes we want to paint in that sketching so let's go ahead we're going to go on the original black and white layer and holding down your alt on a PC or options on a Mac click on the mask icon which is the rectangle with a circle so you want to hold down the alt or option and click on the mask and that will give you a black 
or reversed mask. Now we need that too on the negative, so I'm just going to quickly just hold down the Alt or the Option uh, key on a Mac, and I'm just going to grab the mask and drag it up to the negative layer and let go. So now I've put the reverse mask in both. The next step we're going to do is now we're going to utilize the um, the watercolor the watercolor brushes. So I'm going to click first on the original black and white and click on the mask. Now what we want to do is in order to paint in black obviously um, here with the mask black conceals and white reveals. So it's the same thing with the colors in your background and your foreground. You're going to need to have white to paint in to bring back that sketching and that black and white. So what we need to do in order to switch this, you can either click on this arrow which will switch it back, but if you look in here it says switch the foreground and background colors, it says X, you can use the shortcut key X and that will on your keyboard and that will automatically change it for white as your foreground and black as your background. Now keep that in mind because as you're painting, if you've made a mistake, you can easily just toggle back and forth between the white and the black and you can go ahead and adjust that. So let's go ahead and grab our brush. And again, as I stated before, it's the uh, McBad Shoes brushes that I'm using. And I just click on my brush tool. And here in my brush panel, I just, here's all my brushes that I have uh, loaded. And again, this is the McBad uh, Shoes brushes. I'm going to click this first one. Now, here is how you adjust your sizes. And with Photoshop Elements, if you want to change your angles, you have to manually change them as you go. If you click on Brush Settings, here's your little angle. You can quickly just turn this and just change your brushes, the angle at which, at which you um, paint. So let's go ahead. I'm going to leave this at 25% spacing and leave the rest of um, these settings as zero. And I'm just going to make the brush size a little bit smaller so that I can, um, I have more control. Again, we're using the white as the foreground and you can also resize the brush by using your bracket keys. The small bracket key, it makes your brush smaller. The right bracket key makes your brush larger. So using the watercolor brushes, I'm just going to go ahead and brush a little bit. You can continuously switch up your brushes just by going into your brush panel and change a little bit so you can um, use different watercolor brushes for your liking. Any brush that you want to use uh, of the watercolors and again, you can switch the angles manually or you can just choose um, different brushes. Okay, so now I have a little bit of a hard edge here. I want to just soften them on both sides. So I'm just going to use the X so I get the black. That's the hide or the erase. And um, that if I just click on the sides here with the brush in those hard spots, it will soften it. So I've gone ahead and I've done that. And so now my black and white layer is exactly the way I want it. I think he looks really cute. Now we want to go to the negative layer and do the same thing. The negative layer is going to, again, bring out that drawing aspect. So let's go ahead and click on the, uh, the mask in the negative layer. And again, we need the white. So I'm going to click X on my shortcut uh, on my keyboard to get the white as the foreground. And now I'm going to use another brush. I'm going to make this smaller and I'm going to get really in here with his fur and I'm going to um, just go ahead and use the paint brush and paint around just to bring out some of that fur. And if it's too, too light, uh, you can always switch back 
back and forth between the layers um, to pull out like if I wanted to go back and change the original down uh, you know underside of the black and white to get that a little bit darker I can just do that and go back up to the negative layer and bring a little bit more of that sketching back in uh, going back and forth getting that a little bit darker I really like that a little bit more of his ear and of course I gotta erase some of this again so I'm gonna X out of that and toggle and we get a little bit better on each side here also a little bit there with the sketch and <clears throat> my sketching looks pretty good so now what I want to do is I want to grab the color photo layer and I'm going to press the alt key on my keyboard uh, alt on a PC option on a Mac and with my cursor on the color picture layer I'm going to drag and place it above the negative layer and that should give me a duplicate if not just go ahead and right click duplicate OK and then move it up either way works and again we'll go ahead and turn the visibility on on the layer and we want to add a um, a black layer mask to to the um, the color photo so again the alt or option and click on the mask and now we've hidden the, the color photo and now we can take a soft round brush uh, from your defaults and go ahead and use a soft round and just paint in using your bracket key to make it larger and paint in some color on your bunny X to switch it back to the white so we can reveal it and just whoops made a mistake so we can uh, just go ahead and use the X and get rid of some of that harshness and you can also adjust the opacity I'm going to adjust down dial down the opacity on the soft round brush um, do the X to change it back to white and then paint in a little bit more again X getting a little bit close to that edge And there you have it. Now I can go ahead and add the additional um, <clears throat> font. The uh, the I'm just dragging up and resizing, resizing the element. Let's go ahead and do that. And Just resizing the element and then placing that over, adding a small shadow, and you get the drift. You go ahead and decorate it the way you want. I added a border around the edge just by using the marquee rectangle like this, adding a new layer, and then just choosing a color. I used brown, I think it was but um, just using a stroke edit stroke outline and then um, using one pixel it's going to take whatever is in your um, your picker and add a color so if you select deselect it is now added here it was the white little background uh, border so that's a quick way to add a border, and then here's where I added the font, etc. But I hope you found that you've enjoyed this pencil, pencil sketch. And again, every time you do it, it's going to come out a little bit different. Um, as you can see here in the original, um, I've used I've used uh, quite a few different layers. I've sometimes I've I've um, duplicated some of those layers just to add additional embellishment uh, but either way is just fine I really
Hope that you enjoyed this and got some great tips out of it. Until next time, have a great day.